people until four o'clock by the time we get through them all. But by having these hard limits set and having custom messages, we can actually just go ahead and uh, say, hey, don't even waste your time filling out the form because it's locked because we're at our capacity, but try again tomorrow and you know, here's some other stuff or here's other ways to get help that maybe you don't actually need to see someone. So all these, again, are small wins that we can really work with the students and help them um, with, these, with these kind of things. So the other biggest feature that um, I say is, it's new now, but it's actually been here for about four years, is this remote postability. So this took our, what our front end system with Drupal works you know, extremely well. We can put it out there for the world. Don't have to worry about that as long as you're keeping it up to date. And we can pass this information along to our ticketing system. So this remote post feature is great because you can use the response codes that get, that, that, uh, get sent back and then write custom error messages and pass that along to the user or to uh, any staff. So if it's a 500 one, you can write, and the response comes back as error, please try again. We can actually put that information in there. And so on the, the next slide, and I'll go back and forth, is in the custom email, we're putting the results of a success or a failure inside the email message. So then the students have another point of saying, yes, okay, I actually checked in, I'm on there. Because I don't know about you guys, but when I fill out forms and then I get a generic message back, I'm like, did they even look at it? Or is this just a random robot that's just sending you know, back and pushing that back and forth? So by us really working on and tweaking what kind of messages come back. So say, for example, the ticketing system is just not working and malfunctioning. We can write an error message that's friendly enough that the students say, oh, this didn't work right, or maybe they didn't fill out a form correctly, or maybe they used a character, or you know, something wasn't escaped properly, or they missed something, or there's something, you know, uh, they were trying to break the system. We can definitely put in messages like that so they can either try again, or they can uh, escalate the issue and so they can get help and still you know, uh, come to their advising session. So the biggest thing I like to do is when I focus on the users is use their own data to acknowledge them. And what I mean by that is, you know, everyone always says, you know, dear first name. But again, like I was saying with the web form, you can actually have the submission number go through and we actually send back and say, actually, here's your ticket number so you can reference this. So you actually know that this is actually what the advisors are gonna see later on and they can help you with. So you have another uh, point of if something's not working, it's, you can reference that. Uh, we also set uh, custom send, send from and reply to addresses so in case there's any thing that they either feel like they're waiting too long or need to escalate, they can just reply to that and we have someone dedicated to watch during those times for any escalation issues. So uh, here's kind of what the confirmation is, it kind of zoomed in, is like it shows the ticket number and that's the real ticket number that they can go and look up on our other site to see, oh yes, I'm actually in the queue and I'm, can, I'm gonna get help next. Because by having three different systems, it's kind of hard, you know, we have a, uh, the website, we have the ticketing system, and then we have Zoom to tie all those pieces together and make that uh, very easy for the students to navigate through because they don't actually need to see any part of the ticketing system. They just need to go into Zoom and get the help they need. So redundancies are a key point and Drupal is really great and really came through with that because we have all the submissions in Drupal. So again, if the ticketing system is not working, the staff know right away they can just go look up and see what the next submission number is and see that person, grab them, advise, and help them and get on to the next one. So things don't come to a grinding halt because we have in any given day between 60 to 100 students trying to get help with any of their immigration issues. So we can't have the site go down for one day and then that's just causing another backlog, especially during our busy times. So really kind of having these different redundancies built in, A for the students so they know what's going on and communicating our errors with them and then also for the staff. And so here's like a quick user view of what we have on the site. It's very bare bones and basic. There's a lot of information on there. I know the students aren't gonna read it, but when they come back to the site, when they're waiting too long, they're gonna go through and read it. And then we just gave them about five lines of text to um, tell what's going on today. We capture their username and their uh, student ID, and they click agree and they click submit, and it says the follow-up instructions. And then there's more confirmation that their stuff is actually going through. So different confirmations all along the way really help uh, show the students that, hey, you're still in line, rather than just submitting to uh, you know, a black hole and then it's like, oh, I guess it's my turn. Um, and I'm fully running out of time. But here's the student workflow. So they just joined the Zoom waiting room and we post on our website these different ones at, at our set schedules, which is pretty much set in stone, uh, depending on uh, the time of semester. Um, they get stuck in the waiting room. There's a wallpaper on there that says, hey, go to this website to do this. But it's the same website every time. And they complete the web form. They get the email confirmation. 
they get pulled in with their advisor, they get meet, they meet with them, they get an email of a recap of their session or any next steps they need to do, and that's it. And um, for the staff, it's the same thing. They're just in as moderators into Zoom. They pull students in, they check the ticketing system and uh, help them write the notes, resolve the ticket. So, but what the thing is, we had such an opportunity to turn this virtual that we have not gone back to this in-person advising. We, I just checked this morning, we're at like 27,900 something, because it's actually happening right now, um, back in Atlanta, uh, advising requests. So this system works. It's very robust. Drupal does just such an incredible job at uh, being the front runner and can stand and scale with how many, t uh, how many requests going through how we can just take you know really three simple modules i've expanded it now but you can just get started with these three modules and that got our advising platform up um, and students can now get help anywhere they, before they used to have to come into our office but now they can do it from their phone because drupal is great it's mobile it's responsive and everyone has zoom so the staff can also be remote so if they have days uh that they're working from home they can also help people so it's just like it just shows again and again how drupal has and continues to support georgia tech students and so uh, I think I'm right on time. Thanks. All right. Thank you, Jimmy. Now it's your turn to talk, everybody.